Hi YouTubers, Jeff Cote here with another session of Ask PYS. We've got a question from a fellow boater in Spain. Um, the boater asks, he says, Jeff, I've been watching a lot of your videos and reading your articles. Thank you. And by the way, there's, I know we're doing this YouTube thing, but if some of you want to geek out via print, we have about 12, 1100 pages on our website of just sort of content just like this, but more in the written format. So uh, the video format is a good way, but also if you want, there's a lot more written format that goes more in detail in a lot of these type of topics. So this boater asks, Jeff, I've been uh, watching your videos and I'm trying to basically tackle uh, under your advice how to go about fusing a lot of the wires aboard my boat. How do I go about sizing those fusing and choosing the right fuse for the application? So that's a great question from a boater here in Spain. Um, so the first thing is, see rule number one, nothing's easy. So if, you know, the takeaway from this two, three minute conversation or video here with all of you is not that there is no cheat sheet. There is no easy way to tell you what fuse to use. That's the first thing. So what we do when we fuse a circuit on a boat is we start with the manufacturer's manual. So if you're going to install a VHF, you're going to install anything on your boat, a fan, um, it could be a water pump, it could be an inverter, uh, it could be any electrical appliance that requires electricity to operate. The manufacturer is actually going to be very, very specific on the type of fuse and the amperage of fuse that they want you to use. So the first part, which is hard, is actually figuring out what are all the appliances on my boat, taking that and making sure you have a manual for those appliances. And in the manual, the manufacturer will actually say, I want a seven amp fast blow fuse for this circuit. I want an a and 200 amp fuse for this circuit. Or if it's a windlass, they're gonna say, I want a 80 amp thermal circuit breaker for this circuit. So fuses come in all size and shapes, like a car. There's no such thing as just a car. Cars are all built for different purposes, minivan, sports car, it doesn't matter, convertible, two-seater, could be whatever, it's a vehicle, right? So fuses are like cars, they're built for a specific purpose, and there's quite a lot of choice. So the choices are, first of all, the type of fuse, right? So there's these sort of fuses are called thermal circuit breakers, and these are resettable. And generally, you're gonna have those on circuits that need to be turned off regularly, like a windlass, or that can accidentally trip, and you wanna be able to reset quickly. So these are called thermal circuit breakers, and we have the same thing on our panels. A lot of the panels, those little white or red circuit breakers are thermal circuit breakers. And we have those in our homes. They'll be easily resettable. That's called a thermal circuit breaker. Now the other thing that is often used are what are called basically, if they blow, and this is called an ATO, ATC fuse, if you can see it. It's a little fuses that we have in our cars. Um, a bigger version of that uh, is this fuse right here. It's called a maxi fuse, right? It's just a bigger version of a blade. And when it blows, you can't repair it. You have to swap it, okay? This is called a class T fuse, and we use that on inverters a lot. That's what they recommend. This is a class T fuse. And then lastly, uh, this is another type of fuse. This is called an A and L fuse, and we use that on big circuits as well. You know, so bow thrusters are gonna have this uh, fuse. Um, so first of all, choose the right type of fuse for the application, right? And it's gonna be recommended from the manufacturer. And then the most important thing is not just the type of fuse, but also the size. And that size, I see, unfortunately, so many boaters go, oh, the fuse is tripping, let's just bring the fuse level up, right? Just, oh, the 5 amp was tripping, let's put a 15. Oh, the 15 was tripping, let's put a 30. And I've seen boat fires where people, the fuse was tripping for a reason, and what they did is they put a bigger and bigger fuse, and then what happened is the wire wasn't able to handle the overcurrent that was happening, and the wire caught on fire. So if a fuse trips, you have to ask yourselves as a boater, why did it trip? Was it a bad choice of fuse? Or is there a problem between the battery and the appliance? And as I increase the fuse size, will I be causing uh, damage to any loads? The other thing to, be cons to consider is when you're sizing a fuse, you're sizing it for two things. One is the appliance, right? Which the manufacturers are going to tell you. But the other one that's really important to remember is the size of the wire feeding the device. 
You don't ever want to have a fuse that is not a weak link. A fuse is by definition a weak link. It is the one device in that circuit that should blow first. So remember that when you're selecting fuses, make sure that the fuse is there to not only protect the appliance, but also the wire. And choose the size of that fuse based on the ampacity that the wire can handle. And there's all these tables that are out there. And I know it takes research, but remember, we educate first and then do. And then lastly as well, make sure that the rating of the fuses matches exactly what the manufacturer wants. If the manufacturer says 7 amps, you cannot use a 10 amp fuse. You use a 7 amp fuse. I know that means a lot of fuses, and guess what? On my boat, I have kits of fuses. I have these little tubs and I have all these little fuses and when a fuse blows on my boat, I'm always ready. So carry lots of spare fuses on your boat as well. Good question. Thanks for asking. Thanks for watching this video. Glad to donate my time to make these videos and to share our passion for marine electrical. Help us keep this channel ad free by donating on PayPal, link below, or also potentially buying some of our merchandise on our store. We hear we've got a hoodie, we've got a hat, and we also have some tumblers and other gear. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.